Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm going to get back on the TS250 today, uh, try to get most of the engine work uh, finished up. So let's do it. All right, let's get her uncovered. I've got the gasket on here, everything's ready to go. So I've been polishing side covers. So I've got that to do, or I, I've gotten that done, and all we need to do here is to, uh, I'm just going to put a little oil in the uh, on the Kickstarter seal. Got a new seal in it. And we'll just put a little on the shaft here also. Okay, we've got the washer still here and on the tack drive and everything is uh, good to go here, I think. There we go. Here we're looking for the long one. I think that it is. Yeah, I got her flipped over here, <clears throat> and I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little oil in the seal. And you want to remember to put your O-ring in there. It goes in right here behind the collar. Otherwise it will leak. And then this is the collar and the uh, recessed area. That's where the O-ring is going to go. So we're going to put a little oil on it. Go ahead and kind of twist it in there. There we go. And we've got our neutral safety switch here. I've got to find something. Got to put our little indicator in the, in the uh, place here. And then we've got the cap, and it gets an O-ring.
And that O-ring goes right into this space here. See the electrical contact right up here in the top. And that's going to go up here. Okay, I'm going to take this out of the stand to get to my oil pump here. But I can do a couple things yet. Uh, go ahead and put my shift or uh, clutch shafts in. And I'm going to put a, these go in, it needs to go in with the uh, uh, pointy area going in. And then we'll continue to put a little assembly lube as we go along here. And then the pointy end going in here. Okay. And let me get this thing out of the stand. I've got a, I don't think I can even get sprocket on. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. Okay, let me get that in there. Find me a socket. All right, now let me turn it over. All right, guys, I thought I'd go over this uh, measuring the cylinder and the piston again uh, and go ahead and put the cylinder on before I take it out of the stand. It makes it a little easier. So once I do that, then I can start working on the uh, magneto side. Uh, I don't have the magneto ready yet anyway. It needs some wiring updates. Um, the sheathing needs to be removed and placed on it, but other than that, it should be okay. Okay, just uh, just to kind of, I know I've done this before, but I'm going to do it a little different this time. Uh, I know that uh, most of you have seen me use my dial indicator, my dial gauge, bore gauge, and I'm going to use that, but I'm going to show you another way that uh, most of you would be able to use instead of that because those things are uh, kind of hard to find and they're kind of expensive. Uh, anyhow, this is our new piston. It's a Wiseco. Uh, as you probably remembered, uh, the cylinder was, uh, I thought we were probably not going to be able to use it, but it had just been bored and I thought that probably the dirt was the problem. 
but I don't think it was. I think it was the uh, uh, whoever bored it uh, bored it too big, just a little. And I took a chance and ordered a because the the clearance on it is three to four thousandths. See, these are different than cast pistons. The cast pistons that come with the the motorcycle, uh, they're different, and they set a little tighter. These are uh, forged pistons, and they're, they cut them down in a lathe, and they're a little heavier, and being forged, they, uh, they grow from the heat uh, differently. So you can't set these up as tight as you can a, uh, a cast piston. Wisco wants you to set these up at three to four thousandths, whereas with the cast pistons, you're setting them at, up uh, about two to two and a half. But the thing with the, with the forged pistons is they may be a little noisy when you first start them up, but as they grow from the heat, they will tighten up. And that's why you don't want to uh, put them in too tight to start with because if you do you'll stick them so you've got to pay attention to the information and instructions that come with the piston anyhow I when I measured the old piston and the uh, the cylinder when I, at the teardown I didn't think I was going to be able to do it because I was almost I think it was four and a half to five thousandths when I got the new piston in I measured it, and lo and behold, it's about uh, a thousandths and, a, and two tenths uh, bigger. So it's going to take up the amount of slack. And this is already bored to uh, the last overbore, seven, 72 millimeter. So I, otherwise, I would have had to go to a, another cylinder and bore it myself, or if, if it could be bored. Anyhow, let's get to the measurement. <clears throat> and you want to take your measurement at about an inch from the bottom of the skirt here. And if you, you'll take your micrometer and you try to get a feel for it where it's snug but not tight. And that's about where I'm at right there. So I'm getting... Uh, 2.831 okay now let's go to the cylinder now what you may use uh, you can pick up a set of snap gauges uh, pretty cheap uh, maybe 40 or 50 bucks maybe even get them cheaper than that I don't know but the, the way you want to do this see how these work uh, you want to squeeze it in where it's smaller than the cylinder and then put it in, and you want to put it in about a quarter of an inch above the exhaust port here. I think they actually call for uh, 0.2. So a quarter of an inch would be two, or 0.25. So let's call it right there. Now you want to tilt this. You see this uh, smaller end here? Tilt that down. I've got it kind of down at an extreme angle here, but this is what I want you to look at. Then you release it. And then, with it still at that downward angle, just snug up the thimble there. Now take and just pull that out. And that'll squeeze this in to the exact size of the cylinder. Then, you take your micrometer. This is kind of you got to get used to holding them like this. But you, you get that square and then take your reading. And with that one, I'm getting 2.8344. Four. So 2.8344. Now, when you do this, don't take 
that one reading as as gospel. Always uh, repeat the the process many times, three, four, five times, and, and then average them out. Because if you can't get repeatability, you're doing something wrong. So just do it over and over several times. If it makes you feel better, try it ten times so you can get used to, to reading the thing. And you should have some somewhat of an average. Okay? So that's, that's how you do it if you don't have a, a, bio, a dial bore gauge. Now, you want to continue your three, three places at the top and three places at the bottom. You know, here, here, here. And then turn it over, and here, here, here. And then you take an average that way. But see, that's primarily going to give you taper, what goes down. Uh, now, the least worn area of the cylinder is always going to be the bottom. So, this is where Wisco wants you to do your ring gap. The least worn area of the, of the cylinder, they say. Okay. I'm going to stick this in and just square it up with the piston so that it's pretty square. Then you take where the gap is. I think you can see it's right here. And you measure that just for a snug fit. Now Wisco's telling me that I should have between 0 .006 and 0 .014. Otherwise, 6 to 14 thousandths. And I'm coming up with uh, I think I can go a little tighter. <clears throat> okay, right there. It's a good drag on it, but not overly tight. And I'm getting 12. Twelve thousandths. So we're we fall in into that, and then you just do the same thing with the other one. So make sure you're both within specs. Yep, just about the same feel. Okay, so that's how we do our measurements, and. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and take my my bore gauge I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do this or not Okay, I go ahead and get my my measurement there. That's kind of hard. For, okay, we're about three four point zero zero three four and maybe three five something like that. And then you go. Okay, it's identical. Oops. And about the same. And then you do again at the bottom. It's kind of hard. That's one 
kind of disadvantage to this up on the bench like this. But it had just been bored. There's absolutely no lip in the top. All I did was go to my honing machine and hone this back out to give us a good uh, cross hatch for the uh, for the next piston. Let me get a different light here. <clears throat> Just so you can kind of see it, I'm hoping. Yeah. You can kind of see the trails here where uh, I've had my dial bore gauge in there. But this is a nice cylinder and it should be just fine. So we're coming up with uh, 0 0.0034 for our dimension, and that certainly falls within the uh, Three to four thousandths. So, we're this this thing's going to be okay. And now I'm going to get the. Uh, I guess I just will get the piston rings on. And these are uh, they've got a little end here on the top, but I really don't think it matters on these. Usually, if you've got a marking on the ring, it goes up. Uh, can, yeah, unless otherwise noted, all Wiseco two cycle rings can be installed with either side up. I thought I'd read that somewhere. Okay, so we're, we're all good to go there. And, you know, I think I'm going to wait and put these on. Ah. Go go ahead and do it. Go for it. And you wanna you wanna stagger them. You got your uh, your pin here. And your other pins on the other side here. If there's anybody that doesn't know why those why you have pins on these and not on a four stroke, it's so that the rings cannot rotate. Because if they rotated, they would end up in your ports and then break. So you know, that's why you always want to make sure that they're uh, that the gap is at the pin. You're probably not going to be able to get them in anyway if you didn't. All right, let me get the engine back over here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get her uncovered here. And I'll just give it another wipe out here. And get us some Yama Lube in here. And some Yama Lube on the bearing. I've already got the uh, I've got the pin or the circlip in on this side, and. Again, I'm just going to put a little oil in each pin boss. And then we'll lubricate the pin. Okay, we've got our arrow right here toward the exhaust port yeah. 
There it is. There we go. Right in there. Now you want to make sure you, you stick your paper towels back down in there. Those circlips, they sure like to fly sometimes and you don't want them flying in there. Okay. She's in there. I knew it was going to be a pain in the butt, so I didn't want to have to get laughed at by you guys. All right, so we're, we're ready to go here. Now, again, I'm going to do a real quick clean again on my cylinder before I uh, do that and the best thing to use is automatic transmission fluid okay I just put a little automatic transmission fluid on a paper towel and then you just go in there and wipe it I've already done a bunch of this I cleaned it with soap and water after it was cleaned with solvent and then cleaned out like this so just wipe that out until you've got a until your rag comes out red and white with no dark colors to it gasket on it looks like that's got a it's got a up and a down evidently so this way yep that's the way be careful you don't uh, tear it. All right, we are down. Back this up just a little so I can get some room here and what I do is go ahead and I use my, whatever I'm going to run in the engine. I got Yamalube in here. I think I'm going to take you off this uh, overhead unit for this barrel install. I don't think you're going to really see a whole lot. So let me let me get to that. First we'll put a little Yama lube here, make sure you get it into the ring lands. And double check your Sir clips. Okay, I didn't have to get you off the or onto the stand. I was able to move my overhead so that it uh, was kind of to the side. I went ahead and started the rings because those can sometimes be a bear too. 
So why is that gasket popping up, I wonder? It's almost like it's uh, a little small for the jug to come down. There we go. Down all the way. Okay, looks good. Clean that off, and I'm going to start these nuts. Okay, I, I lost my audio here, so uh, I'm just going to do a talk over. And there's no way you're going to torque them, so. Uh, you can't get a crow's foot in there, so you've just got to do the best you can and kind of estimate your torque. I don't have anything that I can torque them with. So the piston cylinder is looking really nice there. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the uh, gasket on here in a minute and uh, do the uh, put the head on. Uh, it's really looking nice. That's a beautiful piston that went into that thing. Just clean off the excess oil off of the mating area where the gasket goes. Now set the uh, gasket into the recess on the head and you just try to kind of hold it in there. but it didn't, it didn't stay. So I'm looking down at the front there and I'm going to grab a screwdriver to push it back up into the recess. Be sure you make sure that gasket is in the right place before you start bolting it down. Otherwise you're going to have all kinds of, uh, well you're going to damage your, your gasket. So make sure that it's in the recess. You've got a flat washer, lock washer, and a nut on each of the six studs. Now we're going to set the torque wrench up. I uh, I ran that up in three different increments. Uh, of course, just run them down first, 
and I believe I started at 70 inch pounds and then went to like 150 and then the 174 which is the the uh, uh, torque spec for the inch pounds and the uh, the torque sequence is the one I'm on right now that's number one there's number two that's three four five and six And I think I'm doing the final torque there at uh, 174. One seventy four inch pounds. Okay, I think I had some uh, audio problems here. I just figured it out when I was charging the battery. So we'll see when I get ready to upload it whether or not it uh, is a problem. Otherwise, I'll probably have to dub it in. And I'm just putting the, uh, the plug in here. I'm not going to put the spark plug in yet, though. And now let's get our oil pump. Make sure that gasket surface is clean. And our gasket. I'm just going to put a little, let's see, it'll go either way, just a little grease on it to, to hold it in place. like that. If you've ever scraped a gasket off in there, you know not to uh, put gasket sealer on it. Just not necessary there. Check the mating surface here. And I've already got this hose started. And Let's see, we've got uh, straight up and down on our on our drive there. Okay. Can be a hassle. You just want to make sure that you're down, though, on both sides. Otherwise, you can crack your, your oil pump. Okay, so we've got our hose so we can find out how much we need of it. Put our little adjuster in there. And 
I think that's where we're at for right now. I'm going to I'm going to place a couple of these banjo fittings in here just to plug the the holes for now. So I think that's as far as we can go until we get the uh, magneto and then we'll uh, finish that up. Guys, I think that's a wrap on this one until I get the uh, magneto finished up so I can get the, I get, got to get the sleeving repaired on it. We'll put it in and we'll probably go ahead and set the timing while we're uh, at it. And I think that's just about it on the engine. So, hey, thanks for going along on the ride. See you next video.